Uh, your, uh, 20 minutes with Deputy Barry. Um, Deputy Helen has usefully uh, offered me a good lead into uh, my opening comments by once again raising the spectre of populism and uh, the evil that it represents and the need to resist it uh, on, uh, at all accounts. This apparently is the danger uh, we're facing, whatever, pop whatever, populism, whatever populism might be, um, a rather amorphous term if ever there was one. Uh, but, of course, what we're dealing with here uh, is a problem of uh, a judicial system that is uh, dominated by a very small, self-perpetuating elite. Uh, that's what it is. Uh, it's drawn from a very, very small pool, uh, the judicial system and the barristers, drawn from a very, very small pool, uh, largely controlled by the honourable society of the King's Inn. Uh, interesting in and of itself. I learnt a little bit about that uh, chatting to somebody on the phone today, uh, set up by King Henry VIII uh, to ensure that uh, we control access to the bar and keep the Catholics out initially. That was the original purpose of the honourable society. Um, and this is the only place you can become a barrister. And as we know, barristers, judges aren't exclusively all barristers, but they're overwhelmingly uh, barristers. And uh, this honourable society set up by King, King Henry VIII, that is the only place that trains barristers, there's no statutory basis for it. There's no proper statutory base, basis for it uh, in law that we have democratically decided. It literally owes its origins back to Henry VIII. I mean, it's quite extraordinary and was set up precisely on an exclusivist basis to ensure a very small, well-vetted elite uh, controlled who got uh, to be a barrister and who, in effect, controlled uh, the legal system uh, and who was kept out. Uh, and they still do it because inside the Honourable Society of the King's Inn, I've discovered... There's a little secret society inside it called the benchers. Um, so you have the inner bench and you have the outer bench. And uh, the benchers um, uh, who any judge, anybody who's made a judge, automatically becomes a member of the benchers. That's quite extraordinary. A secret society that have secret dinners, uh, I believe Cherry and Tony Blair, incredibly, are members of the benchers uh, in the Honourable Society of the King's Inn, among others. Uh, and I believe they have some very interesting people. None of us ever find out about these dinners, which are held uh, regularly. Uh, you, um, to be called to the bar, uh, a bencher has to sign off on it. Um, and uh, the... Uh, these, uh, these benchers, I would say all of the, uh, because of the way it works, all of the people, both in the sort of old system, the judicial uh, appointments, what was it called, board, and now the appointments commission, the judge element, and quite a few others, I think five I count, would probably be members of the benchers. Uh, the chief justice, the president of the court of the appeal, the president of the high court, the attorney general, uh, apparently sort of automatically becomes a member. And what's incredible is you can be mandatorily made a member of this even if you don't want to be a member, which is really quite extraordinary. Uh, and, you know, uh, uh, it begs a serious question about actually the sort of, you know, the independence of the judiciary and uh, how it sort of can't be questioned because uh, you can have people who are senior benchers who are barristers um, and judges who are more junior in, in this secret society of the benchers, uh, who socialise together, uh, who could be chatting before cases. But if you're a barrister who isn't a member of the benchers, um, there is a very serious potential of this secret society if, if effectively corrupting the balance uh, in the hearing of cases. And uh, this, uh, this uh, group can disbar barristers. 
They can disbar them. Right? I mean, this is absolutely extraordinary. And there's no statutory basis to this stuff. Uh, so this is how uh, the upper echelons of the legal system uh, in this country work. Now, I would say, apart from this, and you know, I welcome the thrust of it, and insofar as you identify the completely unacceptable situation that, for example, a third uh, of judges uh, are um, actually directly connected to the political parties, cronies of the political parties, and that even up in, uh, uh, as recently as the last few weeks, people uh, who are former members of Fine Gael, close connections of Fine Gael, get appointed uh, as uh, judges. Uh, and, I mean, the fact the Constitution requires it, but there is a big problem constitutionally even to the fact that the government are the people who appoint judges. And, uh, you know, I mean, it makes me... I, I sort of ha find it hard to even understand how people can talk about the separation of powers and the independence of the judiciary when that's the case. It just doesn't make any sense to me uh, that people can even talk about that with a straight face. Uh, I hear uh, uh, Jim O'Callaghan say, well, how could you possibly impugn the sort of the judiciary and uh, the way they act and behave and so on? Well, sorry, I think we can impugn them, we can hold them to account, we can criticise decisions uh, we make, and we bloody well should. Right? Yeah, you implied that there was nothing wrong uh, with the political connections and that uh, to suggest that those political connections meant that they were maybe recruiting other judges on the basis of their political connections was nonsense. Well, I put it to you that it is complete nonsense to suggest that people who were appointed because of their connections to political parties or that matter appointed by governments aren't in some way influenced by the fact that those are the people who appointed or selected them. That that has to have some impact, and to my mind, uh, it is a worrying, uh, it is a worrying impact. Um, so I think the whole thing needs to be shaken up. Now I will support this going to the second stage, to the next stage, for that reason. And in principle, I like the idea of a majority of lay uh, representatives. Uh, but there's a hell of a lot more to be done than that. We need to broaden and democratise the base of the entire legal and judicial uh, system and to stop it being an elitist club dominated by secret societies like the Benchers uh, or, or a monopoly being held by the King's Inn as to who can become a barrister and therefore uh, at their members having a disproportionate influence. Even on this new committee you're talking about, they will still have five members, these Benchers, uh, a secret society. Uh, influence on this new uh, commission over who would be recommended or considered to be acceptable and the right kind of person uh, to be a judge and all the rest of it. That's completely unacceptable. And it, you know, it really brings uh, to mind the expression, one law for the rich and one law for the poor. Not just in the dispensation of the law, but literally in how the law is structured. You know, and that's the way it works all the way up the line, at every level. Working class people, the vast majority of people, their experience of court is a thing called the district court. You go in uh, and it's industrial uh, justice, production line justice, no juries, these judges, all mandatory members of the Bencher Society with their secret lunches and so on, uh, uh, dispensing justice on the poor, but if you're rich, you can afford to go into the higher courts. That's a fact. I don't know why you're laughing, Charlie, because that's a fact. Poor people cannot access the same level of justice as rich people. That's a fact. Judge, the higher echelons of, of, of the judiciary, of barristers, overwhelmingly from private schools, from better off backgrounds, and then little inner circle groups uh, vetting and selecting who gets into the higher echelons. That is the reality of what's going on. Right, so the simple things we need to start uh, doing. The, king, the monopoly of the King's Inn should be ended, full stop. UCD should be able to train up barristers and judges, uh, UCG, other universities, Trinity or whatever. It shouldn't be just the property uh, of uh, the King's Inn and controlled by uh, benchers or whatever the hell they, uh, whatever the hell they are. Uh, that needs to end. The idea that we can't criticise judges, their decisions, uh, that has to end. We should absolutely have the right to criticism and they should be have the right to criticise us as well. The politicians, absolutely. I have no problem with that. Uh, 
And I'll just conclude in my last 15 seconds. However, I have a problem. You see, even if we want to open it up, and I, I welcome the thrust of this bill in some respects, in that it's highlighting that, the Public Appointment Service, as the other side of the debate have said, that's a problem too. Civil servants. Uh, who's selecting them? Why can't this be done anymore? I don't, I mean, who knows who the Public Appointment Service or TLAC are, who selects them? They're a self perpetuating elite as well. That's not a good enough way to select judges or indeed the permanent government at the general secretary level of, uh, uh, of uh, government departments.